So what is the Data Protection Act? Data Protection Act, follow it and don't ignore it. Keep data safe and don't lose it. Keep people informed and process it fairly. Data Protection Acts 1998 and 1984 uh, based around eight important principles as illustrated in this presentation. The 1998 Act was introduced to bring the U UK into line with the EU on data protection. The major changes introduced in 1998 are non-computerised records are now included. Some types of personal data are categorised as sensitive. The government website re relating to the Act can be found at the informationcommissioner.gov.uk and the actual text of the Act in its entirety can be found online here. An overview of the Act. Uh, it's an Act to make new provision for the regulation of the processing of information relating to individuals including the obtaining, holding, use of disclosure of such information. It is based on the EU Data Protection Directive and gives right to privacy and uh, no restriction on personal data flow in the EU. Some important definitions. Data. So this is information held in computers and also non-computer filing systems uh, accessible. Processing. Wide definition including obtaining data and disclosing it. Personal data relates to an identifiable living person. The data subject is the individual to whom uh, personal data relates. A data controller controls the purpose for which and the manner in which the personal data is processed. Uh, so many many companies will have the data control and perhaps work it in uh, in marketing, for example. And then you've got the uh, the data processor provides process processing services to a uh, data controller. So they do things with the with the actual data. Special purposes are exceptions, for example, journalistic, artistic, or literacy purposes. And it's basically policed by an independent uh, body, uh, independent from the gov government, and that's called the Information Commissioner, or the ICO. Data protection principles. Personal data shall be processed fairly and lawfully, obtained only for specified and lawful purposes, and further processed only in a compatible manner. Uh, the data needs to be adequate, relevant, and non-excessive. Accurate and up-to-date kept for no longer than necessary, processed in accordance with the rights of data subjects, and kept secure, transferred outside the EEA only if there is adequate protection. So it's down to the company who has the data if they're going to pass it on to a contractor or partner in another country outside the EU that they are adhering to data protection principles as well. The first principle is that pers uh, personal data shall be processed fairly and lawfully and in particular shall not be processed is to have consent of the data subject um, necessary for performance of a contract with the data subject legal obligation to protect vital interests of the data subject to carry out public functions or to pursue legitimate interests of the controller unless interest of the data subject now there's uh, there's a few conditions here uh, with the first principle and uh, we've outlined conditions in Schedule 2 here and then we have a definition of what what is sensitive personal data um, and this is racial or ethnic origin, political opinions or trade union membership or perhaps religious or similar beliefs, health or sexual life or criminal offences. At least one of the conditions in Schedule 3 also has to be met. Um, so, for example, to comply with employers' legal duty, uh, exercising legal rights for medical purposes, etc. You can read them there. You can digest the. You can digest this. Pause the, um, the screen here, and you'll be able to. Um, sorry, pause the film, and you'll be able to digest these at your leisure. Interpretation. The um, the data subject needs needs to know the identity of the data controller in the company uh, the purpose of which data will be processed so they've got rights uh, the data subject the customer has rights to um, uh, to know what data is actually going to be processed about them and any other information that they want about the, their, their own data the second principle personal data shall be obtained only for one or more specified and lawful purposes and shall not be further processed in a manner incompatible with the purpose of those purposes 
The third principle, personal data shall be adequate, relevant and not excessive in relation to the purpose or purposes for which they are processed. The fourth principle, personal data shall be accurate and where necessary kept up to date. So that's really important that the information that you, the data that you've got on people in a, in a, in a company, uh, that, that's, that's kept up to date. Uh, the fifth principle, personal data processed for any purpose or purposes shall not be kept longer than necessary for that purpose or those purposes. Okay, so um, you can have the access to personal data on written request and a fee uh, to prevent processing likely to cause damage or distress. You can prevent, also prevent processing of the purpose of direct marketing. And the list goes on there. And uh, you've got the sixth principle, which is personal data shall be processed in accordance with the rights of the data subjects under this Act. Uh, the seventh principle, appropriate technical and organisational measures shall be taken against unauthorised or unlawful processing of personal data and against accidental, lo accidental lost and destruction of or damage to personal data. So it's really important that you have... Uh, protection in place from uh, fire, theft, uh, corruption data, or accidental loss, whatever it, whatever it is, you've got, you've, you've, you've shown due care that you've actually um, adhered to, you've tried to protect the data as much as you can. So um, using a data processor, a data controller must choose a data processor providing sufficient guarantees in respect of security measures they adopt, take reasonable steps to ensure compliance with those measures, ensure the processor is subject to a written contract requiring him to act only on instructions from the data controller and to take appropriate security measures. So again, you're going to have someone in the business who's a data controller who's really responsible for um, adhering to the Data Protection Act and they have people under them that will actually process the data for, for uh, for the data controller. Now the data controller will have might have different titles, for example, they'll be in marketing or can be a director of the, the MD of the business and things like that. The eighth principle, personal data shall not be transferred to a country or territory outside the European economic area unless the country or territory ensures an adequate level, level, level of protection for the rights and freedoms of data subjects in relation to the processing of personal data. So the commissioner the duties are to maintain a register, spread information, promote compliance, encourage and produce codes of practice, make assessments, enforcement, annual reports, uh, criminal offences, data protection act. These, these include processing without notifying, failure to notify changes, unauthorised obtaining, disclosure, disclosing or procuring, unlawful selling, failure to comply with a notice, enforce subject access. So let's just highlight some of these again. Unlawful selling, you can't go around selling customer data, for example, or finan financial information of your customer customers. Um, that is pro strictly prohibited. Um, and when you process the data, it needs to be done in a, in a way where the data subject, the customer, for example, knows what's, what's going on with that data and why, you, why you're using it as well. Exceptions from the from the Act, some data and the processing are, of, of it are except from parts of the Act. Uh, the reasons here are national security, crime and taxation, health, education and social work, regulatory activity, journalism, literature and art, research, history and statistics, disclosures required by law, domestic purposes are completely exempt. And of course, in education, for example, when you've uh, when the exam board have uh, they're just about to publish the results and the, uh, the 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 students don't know the results yet. So so obviously that's exempt. Uh, the students do not need to know the uh, their grades before the um, official publish publication of them. And it's worth touching on the Freedom of Information Act, uh, which is which is really important. That's with the with, with the data protection act and that um the introduction available from the website at the uh, information commissioner officer office um to summarize the uh jack straw mp who was the mp at that time um 
set out a number of aims um, and this quote summarizes it quite well the bill was not only provide will not only provide legal rights for the public and placed legal duties on ministers and public authorities but will help to transform the culture of government from one of secrecy to one of openness it will transform the default setting from this should from this should be kept quiet unless to this should be published unless by doing so it should raise public confidence in the processes of government and enhance the quality of decision making by the government okay that's it for the um, data protection act and the next video we're going to talk about data protection act 2015 so these are the uh, latest developments uh, with the data protection act and what needs to be adhered adhered to so look forward to seeing you on that video thank you